Here, Jesse. What do you got? I got here, it's a 76 Mercury Bobcat Villager Wagon. It's, um, I pulled it out of a field down in southern Alberta. It's been the factory southern Alberta car ever since it was new. It was sold originally out of uh, a dealer in, um, uh, where the heck is it from? Raymond. Raymond, Alberta, that's right. So, uh, it was last on the road in 1984. So, she's been sitting a while. It was destined for the pressure, and uh, I was able to save it, so. Right, so, 2.3 liter four-cylinder. Yep. Four-speed manual car. Yes, sir. Uh, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, runs? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of runs. <laughs> what does it need to make it run? Well, uh, earlier on this year, uh, Sean rebuilt uh, the uh, carburetor on it. And basically, to get it running and stuff, we really need to do plugs, wires, and... Uh, the fuel tank has rust holes in it, so it doesn't hold fuel. And uh, and the fuel pump is, is dead, so we're going to be putting one of them in as well. So um, After that, it should be at least running, and we'll go from there and see what we got. So. All right, so Jesse, Jesse, yeah. Sean's with us today because Sean uh, knows an awful lot about Ford 2.3 liters. Uh, all of us have had pretty extensive experience with these engines. Yep. Um, all of them have ultimately ended in failure. I have blown up more than you two have both owned. Yes, and I've blown up a couple. Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, I don't know, two or three is all I've ever broken. But yeah, they they all break like all engines do. But this one's got all of its original stuff. Mm -hmm. um, all the emissions equipment was formerly here. The EGR is now blocked. Yeah, I built a new EGR plate, removed that, rebuilt the carb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this thing's basically, like Jesse said earlier, sat for years. And, uh, Sean, you spent, what, a week, two weeks uh, degunking the carburetor and rebuilding it? Almost a month of soaking the carb to degunk it from everything that was built up on it. A mixture of Varsol and then carb cleaner. And then mix Varsol and carb cleaner and wire brushes. Okay, so what's the plan for today? What are we doing to this thing, actually? We are going to do a fuel pump, a cap, rotor plug wires, possibly plugs, and make this thing just run and drive so that we can verify the engine is good so that we can then throw performance parts on it. A fuel injected head, fuel injected lower intake, a carb adapter for it, and a really sweet stainless head over there. Yeah, we'll take a look at that here in the box. Where'd this thing come from? Uh, Speed Daddy Performance originally bought on eBay. It's an eBay find. Well, for an eBay find, it's, it's a nice piece. Mm -hmm. Good stainless, nice welds, stepped header, and nice thick flange. Yeah, it comes across awesome. Those ports are way more than any basic 2.3 ever needs. Yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a lot of port work into the fuel injected head to yeah. try and optimize this. Ah, perfect. Well, let's uh, crack into this thing, tidy it up, and we'll get started. Do we ever grab spark plugs? What spark plugs does it take? Yes. I have TR6s. Well, I thought we had got plugs. They should be sitting in this thing. Because we wouldn't have ordered yeah, plug we plugs. Yeah, we wouldn't have ordered plug wires without plugs. Yeah, we got plugs. Okay. That's important. So I was going to say, we, we've got TR6s, but they're kind of a modular Ford plug, uh, supercharged uh, application. TR5s. Oh yeah, see that's what you want, stock heat range for an NA car. Yep, especially for this thing right now. Yeah, the biggest thing is just to make sure the bottom ain't going to blow up on us. Well, it hasn't ran in 25 years. Hey, it rolled off the trailer and drove into the shop on the float bowl, that's not bad. And that was without the uh, choke hooked up, so... Yeah. That's that's almost the same as a full road test, right? Well, once I rebuilt the car, I poured a little bit of fuel in it, and this thing fired immediately. So, and there was no smoke, there was no drama. So it should be a good engine. Should be relative. Have we checked the oil? Are we changing the oil? I already did. Yeah, we did that. Oh, perfect. 
come out of there, you... We did that before we ever started it. Yeah, there's motorcraft plug wires, air filters. So we've just gotten the original or some replacement auto light, the tuner, spark plugs out. And although they're sooty, uh, mixture's not bad. There's no mechanical damage. The gaps are decent. Um, this engine may have a fighting chance. So we'll gap up and slap some new plugs in there. Yeah, despite being in there for 30 years, they look like they're a year or two old. It's mm -hmm. weird. Yeah, these, these things are surprising. Here's our new plugs all set up, but uh, we went with 35 gap. Here's a really nice uh, vintage Champion spark plug gapping tool. It's got some set wire type gaps, a bender, double sided, and it used to have a file for uh, points and for squaring off the heads, but we don't do that anymore. You just throw them away and buy new ones because they're cheap. But there's a neat piece of nostalgia for an old car. So we've got our new plugs in, we've got our new wires in, and Sean is fighting with the everlasting struggle of trying to make a 2.3 liters plug wires look somewhat nice. And that's not too bad. They really don't look like a pile of spaghetti. Not a bad job. That's a practiced hand there. Oh yeah. So what are we moving on to next? Jesse's gonna do a fuel pump because they are a pain to yep. do. They are. So, show everyone where the fuel pump is. Uh, fuel pump is, if you look down in between the alternator and the shoulder cap, you'll see the, bottom. the fuel pump. Way down in under there. Mm -hmm. Are you going to spill gas everywhere? Probably. Well, well there's not a lot of, there's no gas to spill. <laughs> exactly. Trick question. All right. Let's move on to that. Oh, no, me. I, I still lost. <laughs> so, just to show how close this car was to the crusher, it's got the X. And Jesse tells me that the guy who was running the crusher at the time is the guy who saved it and the guy he bought it from. So it's what I'm taking is a little bit of extremely expensive detailing clay from other projects and some quick detailer, and we're going to try and get this off. If it doesn't come off with clay, then we'll hit it with a razor blade and take it off that way. But ah, Let's just see, because it's not particularly good paint. This can be a good way to get vandalism paint off of a car as well. It's working, but not fast enough. We're gonna hit it with the razor blade. All right, back with the scraper. This is not coming off near as easy as I thought it might. I think it's been on there a long time. It sure has. Might have to get it. There you oh, go. There. It's not exactly like we can just go out and buy replacement glass. Nope. It is out there, but it's not cheap. No. Surprisingly expensive for not what anyone would directly consider a collector car. Well, they used to be a throwaway. Yeah. Now they're old enough that they're cool again. That's right. They, they were the economy car in their day. Although, Mercury economy car is kind of like... Seeing an economy Lincoln or an economy Cadillac of the day, it's, you know. These were the high-end version of. These were the high-end cars. Now well, let's see if we can clay by the rest of this residue off. Well, it was considered of like the old Omega or something like that, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> right in there with that. You know, the Olds and Buick. And yeah. What What was Dodge running? They They must have had a Chrysler product at the time. Oh, K cars. Well. Uh, were in late 70s, I guess that was more like the Valeri and uh, the Aspens. Aspens, yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit left down here. All right, Jesse, good news. Mm. It's no longer crusher mark, so if you park it in the street, someone will show up and just crush it on you. Nice. All right, so we're inside the car, trying to uh, get rid of everything, garbage, filth, and I have just found the biggest pile of rat feces I've ever seen in my life. Ah, I fell. Look at that. Holy. Yeah, it's all feces. All of it. Who wants hantavirus? And then look over there. Oh yeah. Like, the amount in there is incredible as well. 
This thing's practically a biohazard. Oh well, I've got my gloves, so I'm safe, right? As long as I wash my gloves before I use them for the, handling food. The cameraman don't, though. Well, I'll take uh, the floor out of one of the granaries I used to play in when I was a kid. So, I'm taking a break from vacuuming up rat feces, and uh, we'll just check and see how Jesse's going with the fuel pump replacement. Jesse, how is the fuel pump replacement going? That's going not too bad. We got the old one out. Uh, we had a trouble with uh, one of the lines that goes up to the carburetor there, the pressure line. Um, but we got it sorted out, and uh, Sean's just lubing up the new uh, fuel pump right now, and we're going to stuff, stuff her in here. So, Sean and Jesse have uh, gone over to the local parts store to grab some fuel line that they need, and I've set to work polishing part of the hood just to see what color is under here. We're having some debate about whether this car is yellow or whether it is green. So, so what I decided to do was tape off half the hood, grab some of my polishing stuff that was lying around, hit it with the porter cable, and just see what color came up from underneath the mold. And it is definitely a creamy color, but according to the paint coat on the door, it is indeed a light green. That paint coat was found over here and then just looked up so body color of 47 and according to a mercury parts lookup that gives you a light green color and you can kind of see that's evident here in the interior which i've been hard at work vacuuming and cleaning trying to get rid of all the mouse feces so i can change this light switch without getting the hantavirus in the back things have improved dramatically There we go. We can see the world's biggest pile has been removed. And is what I'm going to do now is get rid of all this staining by just simply washing with a bucket of water and some detergent just to help take all the dust and grime and filth off this thing. And uh, it may actually clean up. Like we can't do anything about the rips and tears in the vinyl, but we can definitely get rid of the uh, biohazard dust and age that's going on in here. So more to follow. We're just now taking care of the final preparations for a test start with the new ignition system, the new fuel pump, uh, the plugs. Sean's just filling up the bowls with uh, some very, very old gasoline. Yeah. So where we don't have a fuel tank because the one that was ordered and promised was broken in transport, we have to wait for another one. So in the meantime, we've worked a underhood fuel cell arrangement that we don't recommend to anyone it is not for sale no matter how much you offer and is what we'll be doing is just firing it up tuning the car make sure everything's good to go jesse's made the connection on the battery and he might as well start it make sure she's in neutral yeah certainly in yeah. neutral That's smooth. That is one of the smoother 2.3s I've ever heard. Not bad for an initial screw setup on the bench, eh? Yeah, you definitely got it dialed in pretty close. What do you think, Jesse? Oh, I think it's great. It runs yeah. good, it doesn't smoke or nothing. So Sean, what are you adjusting there? Uh, the air mixture screw. Okay, and what does that change on the carburetor for those fuel injected players? Uh, it changes how much uh, fuel can go into the carburetor at idle. You turn the screw in and it uh, starves air and richens it up. You back it out and it gives more air and leans it up. So but if you go too lean, then you'll get a hesitation on, on throttle tip in. I wish my old 84 ran this smooth when I had it. This is way, way better. This thing hasn't ran in 30 years. That is friggin' unreal how well that runs. And we're 
we're about halfway through our fuel cell. Yep. Yeah. Well, a good chunk of that would have also been uh, filling all the float bowls and lines yeah. and. Yeah. Sorry, But that's okay. This is what we needed was it to run so that we could. And we haven't even checked uh, vacuum ports to make sure there's no vacuum leaks either. That's just. Haven't checked vacuum. Haven't checked initial timing. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. I can hook that up with the vacuum pull off. Where? Nice. There's nothing at idle. You get on the throttle, you get a little bit of vacuum. So, perfect. And that's for setting up the choke, correct? Yep. That's a, uh, a lot of cars don't have it, but it's a secondary vacuum pull off so that if it doesn't trip the lever down in there to open the choke up, as you get on the throttle, vacuum will actually pull the choke off. It makes it so you can drive the car faster when it's still cold. You don't have to wait so long for it to warm up. That's vibrant performance silicone vacuum line. Yes, it is. That's unreal how well that runs. Yeah, no kidding. Like, I think it's great. Nice and snappy. Wrapping up day one on Jesse Jesse's Mercury Bobcat Wagon, which we're kind of calling the Banana Wagon still, even though we found out it's green. So we gave the paint a basic cleaning, which was uh, removal of mold, followed by a, a quick wash off, and then a light power polish with some Meguiar's products I had lying around. It's not perhaps the best way to do this, but in this case of this sort of paint, you can't hurt it, you can only make it better. So with that, we gave it a polish all the way across, which came out nicely in a light coat of wax. So as you may remember from earlier, all the mold and moss mostly is gone, and is what we have left is paint. Moving to the inside, we've done quite a bit of cleaning here. As you may recall, it was full of rat's nests, and mice and every other thing like that and we managed to do a full shampoo and get it to you know a 80 percent kind of clean it's not bad but it's far better than it was taking a look at the mechanical side uh, sean jesse and i managed to freshen up the ignition system uh, get the carb tuned up and working well install a replacement fuel pump but we're still short on that uh, fuel tank so right now we're still running the custom bottle that's just for moving it on and off the trailer until the tank shows up but overall it starts it runs really well sean was really impressed with that especially given how much time that it spent not running and overall the project has gone really good jesse today success i believe so i think it's a good start on uh, a project that uh, should be fun and hopefully be sean so